Hey, this is Dina. Welcome to the den. Believe it or not, there was actually a time when I wasn't a Silent Hill fan. I know, right? But it's not like I didn't like the first two games. I thought they were great. I just wasn't as intense about liking the series as I am now. And I definitely wasn't making 45 minute long videos about them. But then Silent Hill 3 came out and I went, Hey cool, another Silent Hill game. Bought it, started playing it, and then put it back down for whatever reason. I think it's partly because the first couple areas are such a pain. I just wasn't quite prepared for it. For reasons I'll get into another time, I eventually picked it up and I was so glad I did. So, obviously it came out after Silent Hill 2. Before I go on, I should probably clarify something. I know I said that Silent Hill 2 was basically the pinnacle of the series and it all started to go downhill after that. Well, it did. But it was gradual at first. Silent Hill 3's story isn't as deep, and it's not quite so heavy on the symbolism. It's a little more straightforward, but it's still an awesome game in its own right. It's probably the most difficult out of the first four games. The level design is really complex, and you really need to use your head to get through it. But it's a legitimate challenge, and not cheap, so I generally don't mind. And it doesn't hurt that you get a lot of cool weapons to play with. This game really forces you to think about what you're doing, and just charging into an area can sometimes get you killed. Yeah, prepare to feel like a subway magnet. This game can be frustrating. The shopping mall, and especially the subway station, are a bitch and a half to get through at times but it makes them just that much more satisfying to beat. Silent Hill 2 was a very early PS2 game, so while it looked great, it didn't look quite as good as it could have. Silent Hill 3, on the other hand, does a good job of pushing the system to its limits. There's no need for FMVs in this game. It's all in-game graphics and it looks damn good. One of the features in this game that's really cool is that it likes to add strange and disturbing imagery that's just out of your reach, either behind glass or in the middle of an abyss beyond where you're standing. It can't hurt you, but you can see it, whether you want to or not. There's also a few random little scares that don't have much to do with anything, but they're cool. The whole game is generally darker and scarier than Silent Hill 2, which was really more morose and depressing than anything. Not that I'm knocking it, of course. Silent Hill 3 does not focus on the supporting characters as much as Silent Hill 2 does, but they're all interesting in their own ways, and they add a lot to the story. It's more like the first game, where they help to form a backstory rather than having any similarities to the main character. The memory of his cruelty is forever burned into my mind. Yes. Yes! And that's why we need God! What you call faith is nothing more than a child crying out for love. That's why you're all alone. I love Vincent and Claudia. They're some of my favorite characters in the series. You don't understand. None of you do. And speaking of that, so far, this is the only Silent Hill game where you play as a female character, Heather. And I love her to death. Oh, hell. She is I so sassy and smartass. So what? With a setting as dark and bleak as this game has, is every person here a mental case? You need a little bit of comedy to take the what edge off once in a while. Hell if I know. She's also one of the very few main Silent Hill characters to not end up with an unfortunate catchphrase. Have you seen a little girl? Have you seen a little girl anywhere? Have you seen a little girl around here? Her name's Mary. Mary? I'm looking for Mary. Mary? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? You gotta be shitting me! Yeah, don't even get me started on Alex the Potty Mouth. But anyway, I was a teenage girl once, so I can basically relate to Heather more than I can to James. I love you, James, but you have issues. Sorry. Now I keep comparing this game to Silent Hill 2, partly because it came directly afterwards, and also because Silent Hill 2 was the last one I did an episode on. 
But Silent Hill 3 has almost nothing to do with Silent Hill 2, aside from the location and a few little gags. Oh, forget it. This is way too gross. Who would even think of doing something so disgusting? Actually, as odd as it seems, Silent Hill 3 is a direct sequel to Silent Hill 1, although it doesn't become obvious until about halfway through the game. It set this odd precedent where, well, Silent Hill 4 was not a direct sequel to Silent Hill 2, but it brought to life some of the ideas mentioned in Silent Hill 2. Now, I highly recommend playing the first Silent Hill game if you can get your hands on it. Sure, the voice acting is bad and the graphics look dated by today's standards, but it has a great story and atmosphere. You don't have to play Silent Hill before playing Silent Hill 3. The game is pretty well self-contained and does a good job of recapping the first one so you understand what's going on, but you will appreciate it more if you do. And that's about as far as I can go without mentioning any spoilers. So, once again, if you haven't played the game and this has piqued your interest, stop here, go and play the game, then come back and watch the rest of the video. It's ultimately up to you, but just remember, no matter how much of the game I may include, there's always plenty that I left out, and I'll be including less spoilers this time around. See you in part two, hopefully after you've played the game.